Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. The dreaded Ebola virus is in the United States. How would Southeast Missouri prepare itself for an Ebola outbreak here? I'm joined now by Vanessa Landers. She's the Communicable Disease Coordinator for the Cape Girardeau County Public Health Center. Thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Thank you very much for having me. Well, can you share with us a little bit kind of what the what kind of action plans are, are, are in place in case something like Ebola was ever found here in, in, in Southeast Missouri? Well, pretty much of our action plans that we have, we like to go with an all hazard plan and that way it will take in most anything that we would have to deal with, whether it would be Ebola, hopefully not, but any of the other communicable diseases, you know, E. coli, we have outbreaks of that, you know, lots of things that go on in communicable disease. So if we figure if we, you know, if we approach it with the all hazards plan, then we pretty much work together with the other entities around in our area that we can all stay on the same page and we can actually combat the problem you know, together, and we're basically prepared for everything. Oh, what are the what are the other entities that you that we, you you would work with for something like this? We would work with the state health department. We would also work with um, uh, centers for disease control, the CDC in Atlanta. We also work with other health departments. We work with um, in our local area with our police departments, fire department, uh, emergency personnel. You know, any of those. That, that would be our game buddies that we would have in a situation like that. Now, do the Centers for Disease Control kind of have some, some plans that they, like recommendations that they have for, for local public health uh, offices like yes. yours? Yes, they, um, we use CDC as a guide and, and reference and they put out a lot of things that with our state health department we can use for advisories, alerts and those kind of things which that piece of information, most anybody that calls and they need to know some information, you know, whether it's Ebola or E. coli or anything that would be out there, then we can refer them to, you know, the CDC websites. And that gives all the up-to-date information and we get our guidance, our state health department and our other local health departments get our guidance uh, basically from them. For, for, for your office right now, is, is Ebola pretty high priority? We call it a high priority because it's something new and we want to know as much about it as we can and that way we can, um, we can identify the areas that we need to look at more closely with our plan to make sure that there's not something else that needs to be added, taken away, uh, talked about, exercised or you know any of that so that we would be sure that we would be ready to, you know, to deal with something that we've never dealt with before. Changing topics a little bit, um, <coughs> enterovirus D68. Um, what are some steps that folks can take to, to, to avoid this, uh, to avoid this communicable disease? Basically, like you would do with everything else, good hand washing. Um, if you cough, cough into your, you know, into your elbow so that you don't spread the, you know, the, the airborne droplets out into the air. Um, and especially in this time of year, we tell people, you know, if you're sick, stay home. You know, don't, you don't have to go everywhere. If you're sick, stay home. If you know once someone's sick, don't go there. I mean, there's people with fevers, there's all kinds of viruses, you know, that are out there. And with the, like with this enteral virus, there's lots of those viruses out there. Now, whether it gets typed the D68, you know, it, it may get typed that, but uh, we haven't had any confirmed of those cases here. We've had some enteral viruses, but that's nothing unusual. But um, basically good hand washing, um, keeping your kids home. If they have a fever, keep them home at least for 24 hours and, until they're fever free. And that's without any Tylenol, ibuprofen, any aid that would take the fever down. So, and that cuts down, you know, the spread of things in your own home as well as, you know, going out, you know, to other areas. How about the flu? What, uh, what are the flu strains that are, uh, that, are, that are among us this year? Basically the same that were last year, that those same strains are in the vaccines this year. Um, I encourage everybody to go out and get your flu shot. We can combat that with a vaccine. Uh, if you've ever had the flu, it's very devastating versus getting a, you know, a vaccine. And it's not to say that you might not get, you know, something. You may come down with something before you even get the flu shot. So give the, give the vaccine a chance you know, to do what it needs to do. Uh, lots of people die of flu, and it's very, very sad that that happens since it is a vaccine, present, you know, preventable disease. Um, do you have plenty of the, uh, the, the flu vaccine available this year? Yes, we do. We have vaccine available at our health department. Uh, it's $20 uh, vaccine. That's for uh, adults or children. We also accept Medicaid, Medicare, um, and uh, 
be very happy to vaccinate you and your family, you know, to come down. There's no appointment necessary. There's walk-ins. We also have different clinics uh, that's set up so you can check the newspaper, that kind of thing. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can call us at the health department and we'll be glad to answer any question that you have. Are there any people that, that shouldn't, get the, shouldn't get the flu vaccine? Basically anyone, you know, that might be allergic to some of the components, if you, you know, have that question in mind, always call us and we can, we can go through that step with you to see if, you know, that you might have an allergy to some of the components. Otherwise, uh, we, we invite everyone from age six months on up to be vaccinated. Are there, what are the warning groups, the folks that should definitely absolutely be, be, be vaccinated? A lot of, uh, especially the, what we see a lot in the age group, uh, the uh, children, uh, adolescents, young adults, uh, very much need to be vaccinated. And that's not to consider the middle aged and the older adult as well. And then also people that uh, may have uh, uh, autoimmune deficiencies, you know, that they're, uh, they're uh, immunocompromised. Uh, those people need to be vaccinated as well because they run the risk of being, getting a whole lot of other things, you know, along with the flu. We've been talking today with Vanessa Landers. She's the Cape Girardeau County Public Health Center's Communicable Disease, Communicable Disease Coordinator. Thank you so much for your time, Vanessa. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for having me.